Hello and welcome to another video from me. Now I've got a few channels here on YouTube now so never quite sure what I'm supposed to say when I turn around. I've got the Box of Demons which is my main gaming channel on virtual reality, combat, military stuff. And then I've got Boots on the Ground which was named by one of my subscribers which is my hiking, wild campaign and adventure channel. And because I started to take an interest in ants of all things, I thought well let's stick that on another complete channel. It'll just be for me to document and help me when I reach out to the ant community to ask them questions on the healthcare and what I should do, what I shouldn't do, etc. for the antage. So if you don't want to subscribe, I kind of get it, but I am very, very new when it comes to antastic, fantastic, as it were. So in this video, I'm just going to do a little update on where we're at with my colony of Lassius Nigel. It's not even a colony, I've just got my queen and some... Nantics, I think they're called, but I'm also going to be trying and giving them a little bit of protein. Here we go, a pound from the pound shop. Now, whether they prefer fresh protein so it's a little bit juicy, who knows? But let's have a little update. But this is my second video. Any advice or suggestions, you're more than welcome to leave them in that comments box below. Otherwise, subscribe, like, thumbs up, and let's see if we can get to 10 subscribers before Christmas. Fantastic. So here is my Lassius Niger Queen and as you can see in there we've got three workers and from looking a little bit in more detail I have to actually use the time zoom on my macro lens what you're looking at is normal view but I have to zoom in like times 10 for focusing on the back of the camera and I can actually see that there are a few pupa in there and there are a few eggs as well so nothing to worry about because when I initially took them out of the red acetate, the queen wasn't moving at all. Now what I need advice on really at this stage is hibernation. I keep getting mixed comments from people on Reddit and on the Discord, some saying that the Lassius Niger is such a hardy species that they don't really need to go into hibernation, especially when they're in a nice warm toasty house. Other people are saying, well, no, that will affect the colony further down the line and the queen won't lay as many eggs. Now, I'm not wanting a huge, massive amount of ants at the end of the day, but if it means that the ants are going to stay healthy and they're not going to die off by me putting them into hibernation, which I'm told is kind of like now until March, I know I kind of got the ants at the wrong time. But if you do know the answer to this, whether I really, really should put them into hibernation or not, then please, please, please leave your feedback, suggestions and comments in that box below. Speaking of mixed information and not knowing really which way to go, I have been advised that I should put a small, a very small piece of protein in there and maybe a drop of honey every two to three days. Now, again, if these ants are supposed to be in hibernation, would they really be feeding every couple of days? And when I do this, is this disturbing them? Of course, if they go into hibernation, then what happens to the eggs and the pupa? Because we've only got the nantics at the minute, which are the small workers here. And from my limited ant knowledge, they will eventually hatch into the real size workers. So again, I need information on whether that's the right thing to do. But in this video, I will be putting a very small piece of mealworm in there. I did put a fly that I'd caught off my windowsill, but they weren't interested. They were like, bollocks to that. We don't want that dirty old sweaty thing. We want something new. So more questions here. I'm going to be bombarding you all with more questions. Should the mealworm have been fresh, as in it's a little bit more juicy rather than a dried one? And I think the piece that you're about to see me put in may be a little bit big. And I also noticed that the honey that I removed from the first video, they actually didn't eat it all. So it might not have been the best idea to put more food in there. I'm kind of guessing at this stage, but that's probably too much of a meal for these four. Now, if you think of it really, it would be like you having a pork chop that was the side of an Arctic lorry. So <laughs> that's probably going to be overkill. So it is Sunday today. If that hasn't been devoured in any shape or form by Tuesday, I will remove it. And I'll also take out the small honey that I'm going to put in in a second. I shall also remove that again. But again, this is all a learning process for me as a Yorkshire lad. So again, any advice for more experienced people out there, please, please do leave your comments, suggestions and feedback on what I should and shouldn't be doing in that comments box below. 
I'm recording this on a Canon 5D Mark II with a 100mm macro lens and even now you can't get in close enough. These videos really don't make you appreciate how small these ants are. The actual Nantics are probably two or three millimeters. So we really are focused in here, but I have got a new lens coming for my actual phone, which should give us five to 10 times zoom. So look out for that. But that brings us to the end of this video. Just a quick update. My second video here. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, all comments and feedback are very welcome. See you in the next one. Fantastic.